Will Ecuador bounce back from their disappointing 2-1 loss from Venezuela? Or can Jamaica finally score a goal after seven failed attempts at the Copa America and win a match? And who will replace their captain, Superman, Ener Valencia? We will go through all of this as we go through things we should know about Ecuador. What going on everybody? You know say a ball of foot. You don't know say a knocking. So what the right you saw talk about Ecuador right now. But just wanna big up everybody from the last video. Who you get me leave their thoughts down in the comments. We see the mixed reception. Some people tell me say I one of the best analysis video them see on Jamaica match. Some people just straight up tell me say I chat garbage. I one of them thing there. We keep moving. But today we are looking at Ecuador on a different angle and see who we are come up against as Jamaicans. So Ecuador now, Ecuador actually coming to the Copa America as dark cars. Uh, they actually beat, the highest they actually go into the Copa America is fourth place. But we can look on in the past 2021 and 2020-16. They did reach the quarterfinals and they also reached the quarterfinals in 1997. So that's three times since Copa America been keeping they reached the quarterfinals. So that's not a bad look at all. So really I come against a prominent side. Well later we're gonna talk about the key players, but I just wanna talk about the farm coming into the Copa America. Alright, so Ecuador farm coming into the Copa America. They beat Bolivia 3-1 and also Honduras. They did lose earlier though to Argentina one love, but the back-to-back -back wins mean that they're coming to the Copa America in a great form. Yes, it was a disappointing loss against Venezuela, but we have to take it with a grain of salt. They played majority of the match with 10 men. They got a red card. They were shown a red card to their talisman, Ener Valencia, who we're going to look on later down and see who we're going to replace him. But we have to look and say, yo, they actually went ahead with that 10 man. They were actually balling. They actually looked like the better side with the 10 man up until in this later down in the second half. I get tired legs got to them, or even just the belief from Venezuela came about to realize, say, hey, we have the man advantage, you know. But we have to look and say, yo, we really have to take this Ecuador team serious. Really and really and really and true from a yardy perspective. But let's look on more on them formation what they play with. Viewers, I don't like beg you know, but I beg you do. Like, subscribe, and share. Do it! Thank you. Just do it! You do it yet? It's simple. Like, subscribe, and share. Three clicks. Sure enough four. Thank you. So Ecuador now play with, as you can see on the screen, 4-2-3-1. But I want to tell you though, in the majority of the match, they had to play with the man down. They played a 4-4-1 formation. And then at times they played 4-2-2-1. It's either the two or the central midfielder were too advanced. Meanwhile, the wingers cut in to help in the midfield. Or the wingers supported the striker who was alone up top. And for majority of the game, it was Kevin Rodriguez was up top. Who replace well not replace but you know the substitute the substitution them end up put Kevin Rodriguez up top for play striker so yeah since we talk about Kevin Rodriguez let's take a closer look on the key players everybody know Moises Caicedo yes Chelsea flop hundred and odd million hundred and fifteen to be exact I think hundred and fifteen mil flop but he's certainly not a flop in the Ecuador team he's one of their talisman you can see him always on the ball and even at Chelsea it's just bad form for him right now we well, look out for him next season he's supposed to have a better season next season but he's definitely one of the main player we have Inner Valencia who sadly look like for him Copa America hopefully wrap up because from a yard perspective we want to win the match and if we beat them yeah man that would be going to be the end of Valencia Valencia tournament because with the uh, with the straight red, not automatic. Where me get automatic red? It was an automatic red still. You guys, uh, not kiss them. Look on the screen. No man stamp the man in him chest. But I one of them thing them did I go for the ball, but it's unfortunate. In a Valencia, that's going to be the end of your tournament. Sorry. Who going to replace in a Valencia? We have Kevin Rodriguez, 
who helped his side. Well, he did play a bit part, to be honest. Go, just five goal contribution to his name over in Union Stade, Jelou. I hope I never butcher the name, but that's the best I could. That's the Belgian Pro League. So I look out for him. Him did come off of the bench last match. I never did look too bad. Moving on though, we have Sarmiento. People, English Premier League lovers, and they're supposed to know Sarmiento. Although him did end up going the latter part of the January season, him did go to Ipswich and did help Ipswich to come up into the Premier League. But he needed some game time because him did have some injury. He mainly applies his trade, Sarmiento on the left wing, but he definitely can play out through the middle. As you can see, he played last match. Him coming off of the left wing and played through the middle, especially when they went down to 10 man. So, well, look out for Sarmiento. Good, good baller. Remember, say, a Madrid him come from. So, a good, good baller that. And we have Piero Incape. <laughs> well, hi Incape. Anyway, you know how to pronounce it. Him come from Bayer Leverkusen. You know, the stellar season Bayer Leverkusen been on last season so we are look out for that center back here him play left back for ecuador but him looks stellar and him do play left back you know oh, Bayern leverkusen side sometimes you see him left back sometimes you see him center back but Bayern leverkusen no really you know no one have grimaldo which is left wing back so but him would have played left center back you know i already know yo xavier lanza team just like arteta team you have to be very versatile so i'm not surprised to see him out there at left back for ecuador i did look solid last match i'm not telling a lie Moving on to William Pacho coming from Frankfurt, also Germany. Why them have so much German? A beer German baller. We need some of them baller. We can't send out some of our yard baller. Got Germany. But moving on. Chippy. Alright, let me move on. <laughs> William Pacho, center half, had a great season with Frankfurt as well. So we are looking out for him. Very tall, bulky. You know, we're going to really have some trouble with him. He did kind of did shaky last match. He was at fault for their first goal because as you can see on the screen everybody, they were playing out of the back which you expect from the Ecuador team because majority of the team, they play with the ball very well. So they're very comfortable with the ball although Pacho did have that shaking moment which allowed Venezuela to take the quick, quick throw in and they did capitalize on it and got a goal. Yeah, as you can see on the screen. Moving on. So Kendry Paez, the 17 year old wonder kid from Ecuador, currently playing for Independiente in Argentina. Chelsea, 2025 summer, already signed him already. So well, look out for him. Kendry Paez, water baller. I was watching the last match and he, he looked good. The 17 year old wonder kid. Them did have to keep him on the pitch to all good him be even when they did have 10 man because he really did stand out, so we are look out for him as well. Viewers, I don't like beg you know, but I beg you do like, subscribe, and share. Do it! Thank you. Just do it! You do it yet? It's simple. Like, subscribe, and share. Three clicks. Sure enough four. Thank you. How we can affect this side here now. So alright, my mention say how them play out of the back a lot and them comfortable with the ball at them feet. Again, see the flyer again, people. I don't know. Four more. Welcome for the flyer. I see the flyer though. Yeah, back to what I said. You realize that them comfortable with the ball. They mainly play out the ball. They, they play out the ball straight from the back up top. Really, they do go for the long ball. They only go for the long ball under pressure. And that is where I see Jamaica possibly hurting them. We probably should do a mixture of what we did with Mexico, similar to what we do. And also high press. We think we should high press more. Probably we should use more athletes. We're gonna need some more athletic people. We know that Antonia can Antonia go up in her age doing Antonia workouts. So I really can't really say that. But I think we can exploit them by doing some high presses at time and put them under some pressure, rile them up. But we do have to be careful about their attacking. Their attacking is very exceptional. And if on a good day, we we'll, we'll probably don't score a goal again. But God know all I want is a goal. And then you can see this in the next preview. We're coming. I'm going to drop the preview for Jamaica tomorrow morning. So go look out for it and stay tuned to Knockings. Remember for like, subscribe, and share. You know where I wrap it up. I never want to take up so much on the time. I'm just glad to be here. Give thanks. And I don't know how we do it. We keep the ball on our foot. And it's a good look. 
napkins were out. 